So we know with respect to x, we know with respect to y. So i z is equals to i x plus i y. That is equals to m b square by three plus m a square by three. This is m by three a square plus b square. Hello everyone. Myself Shweta Shah, and uh, today uh, we are doing a topic. मैकेनिक्स तो दिस इज अ कम्बाइंड टॉपिक इन योर यूपीएससी दिस इज सब्जेक्ट ऑफ योर पेपर टू एंड दिस इज मैकेनिक्स एंड फ्लू डायमिक्स द लास्ट पोर्शन सो मैकेनिक्स दिस इज एंड एंड वी आर डूइंग दिस टॉपिक टूडे मूवमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया सो दिस इज द सिलेबस ऑफ मैकेनिक्स एंड फ्लू डायमिक्स एंड This portion, generalized coordinates, the Ellenberg's principle, and Lagrange's equation, Hamilton's equation, motion of uh, movement of inertia, motion of the rigid bodies in two dimensions. So till here we have, uh, till here we have mechanics, and after that we have fluid dynamics. Although these are very uh, two major subjects, uh, two different major subjects, but UPSC ask them, uh, they combine the subjects and then they ask the questions. so uh, as you have already seen that i'm going to start with the topic movement of inertia so for many of you uh, students uh, because this is a physics uh, portion so students try to you know uh, skip this topic and they they actually skip this topic but uh, my suggestion would be uh, do not do not skip any question uh, any uh, subject the reason being now i'm not saying uh, that you should be perfect in every topic in every uh, subject that we, that you have but the thing is if you do not if you yourself leave some topic before appearing for the exam you what you do is you stop your options in the exams means if you have options like out of eight questions you have to do five questions but you have already prepared for five questions you have not even prepared for eight questions then you actually do not have the choice because you have you have no choice you have to do those five questions right so that's why it's better to actually open all the options for you so that's why and and also at least go through the topics at least you should be familiar with the uh, basic formulas basic questions so that even if if, if the basic questions appear you should be able to uh, uh, you should be able to see that yeah i can do this question i'm familiar with this question and you can attempt the question okay so let's start with movement of inertia so initially i'm starting with some of the basic definitions rigid bodies a rigid body what is a rigid body a rigid body is a system of particles such that the mutual distance of every pair of specified particles in it is invariable and the body does not expand or contract or change its shape in any ways that is the rigid body has invariable size and shape and the distance between them uh, between any two particles remains always same so basically what happens is we have A, a body, right? You apply forces on it, okay? So, and you fix any two particles in that particle one and particle two in this rigid body. So, if you are applying forces on it, maybe the position of the rigid body will change, but there will be no overall change in its shape, and there will be no change in the distance of the particle that you have chosen this can be for any two particles any two random particles in the part uh, in the in the rigid body okay so overall uh, structure of the rigid body does not change body does not change and then this body is known as rigid body moment of inertia of a particle we, we have a simple formula for that okay and this formula will be used uh, throughout our questions as well so this says moment of inertia of a particle consider a particle of mass m so this is a particle of mass m and there is a line there is a line in this is the line in then the moment of inertia of the particle of mass m about the line ab is defined as i is equals to mr square so basically when you have to find moment of inertia of a particle of given mass with respect to a line then what you need is obviously you need mass of that particle and you need perpendicular distance of that particle from that line okay so this is the perpendicular distance r so moment of inertia is then given by mr square simple okay very important formula 
Now, this is this was just for a single particle. What if I have a system of particles? Then you will do the summation. You will find moment of inertia of each particle, and then you will do a summation. So I have p particles, p number of particles. So this is m one r one square, m two r two square, m three r three square. This is the summation, and this is moment of inertia of a system of particles. Next, now what is the moment of inertia in of a continuous distribution of mass? This is something that we'll assume for our body, for a rigid body that mass is equally distributed, continuously distributed over the body. Then this is the rigid body, right? So, what what will uh, happen here? We'll take a small element. So basically, we'll take a element uh, with a very small mass. Uh, so as you can see. consider a rigid body and let dm be the mass of the elementary portion of the body means a very small portion or a, uh, a portion of a uh, of very small mass uh, elementary portion of the body which is at a perpendicular distance r so after that same we have a perpendicular distance r from the line ab the motion uh, moment of inertia of the whole body is defined as this so we will integrate so basically what happens is first of all you will find moment of inertia of that elementary mass that you have taken and that is dm r square mass r square right and if now this is just for that mass that you have taken if you want to calculate for the whole rigid body you will integrate okay you know, how that integration will happen what will be the integration uh, matlab limits of the integration that will see take okay, in some uh, examples okay this is a concept radius of uh, radius of gyration so radius of gyration is nothing but what you do is uh sometimes you have a you have a, a rigid body A basic uh, rigid body like um, they they can talk about rectangular lamina, they can talk about sphere, they can talk about ellip ellipsoid, paraboloid like these. But sometimes they will combine the rigid bodies like there is a, a rectangular parallel pipe and over which we have a sphere. Okay, so you have to find moment of inertia of that. So we have a formula like this. This is the this is the formula to find the moment of inertia for the whole body. Okay, integrate. integrate was for the not for integration for whole body integration is for the whole body so after that after calculating uh, moment of inertia you equate that moment of inertia okay um just a second yeah so you equate that moment of inertia with mk square what is m m is the mass of that rigid body or if you are taking combined bodies there are two bodies so we are talking about total mass here so this will be the total mass k square this k will be obviously a real number you know what is i moment of inertia you have already calculated this m we already know the mass total mass of the rigid body m k square now when you equate them this is just a equation you have to solve the value for k and that k is called the radius of gyration okay this was it for this concept and uh, then we have product of inertia so product of inertia is a different concept like we have a moment of inertia that is with this just uh, we have learned that moment of inertia of a particle or of a rigid body is with respect to a line here product of inertia if x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 and so on respectively they are the coordinates of the particle of masses this refer to two mutually perpendicular lines ox and oy now this is important uh, when we are finding moment of inertia you need a line you find moment of inertia with respect to a line but you find product of inertia with respect to two mutually perpendicular lines in a plane So you need two lines. Then the product of inertia of the system of particle is given by this is mass, and then x one y coordinates plus m two x two y two and so this is concept. Now from here we can start with motion of inertia of some simple cases. We'll discuss for some simple cases. Now I have started with motion uh, movement of inertia of a rod. 
moment of inertia of a rod of length 2a so we have this is a rod Mo uh, moment of inertia of a rod of length 2a this is length of length 2a and of mass m so mass of uh, mass of rod of length 2a is capital m so we have the rigid body but we do not know with respect to which line we have to find the moment of inertia so that is given here about a line through one of its extremities that means uh, there is a line through one of its extremities perpendicular to its length this is the length so there is a line which is perpendicular to this line and at one of its extremities right so let this line be ab this line is ab so now we have a rigid body we have a line what we need to do m uh, m r square okay. mass and the distance so that was just for a particle but this is a body where mass is continuously distributed okay it's a rigid body so what we'll take is we'll talk we'll start by a, taking a small elementary portion that was the definition for a continuous mass distribution we take dm be the mass of elementary portion of the elementary portion so what we'll do is we'll take a small portion here okay. this is of length delta x which is at a distance which is at a distance x from this line mass of the complete rod which is of length 2a is capital m so mass of rod of length 1 unit or mass per unit length is m by 2a so i can have the mass of this elementary portion obviously you will write that let uh, let uh, pq be an elementary portion of this rod right of of uh, length del x so you write that and then mass of rod of length del x will be m by 2a del x so you have mass of this body mass of this portion and now all you need is the distance distance is x so m r square m mass x square therefore moment of inertia of moment of inertia of pq elementary mass pq is is moment of inertia of elementary mass pq is this is your mass m by 2a del x and x square just will integrate it and then we'll get the moment of inertia of the whole body that means whole uh, rod so that would be it implies moment of inertia of rod of length to it would be integration this m by 2a is constant i'll take it outside m by 2a this is x square dx and what is the limit what is limit of this uh, x that element can be from here to here it is from 0 to 2a distance from that line ab starts from 0 till 2a so this is from 0 to 2a so that would be x cube by 3 so m by 3 2a 
टू ए क्यू दिस इज फोर ए स्क्वायर एम बाय थ्री दिस इज योर मूवमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया एंड दीज बेसिक मूवमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया फॉर दीज बेसिक रिजिड बॉडीज लाइक रॉड रेक्टेंगुलर लेमिना पैरलोपाइन ट्राइंगल इलिप्सॉइड सर्कल लूप दिस यू शुड लर्न एज द फॉर्मूलाज एज वेल बिकॉज समटाइम्स यू नीड टू यूज दैम इन सम क्वेश्चन डायरेक्टली so this was it now before coming to the next part here i want to introduce a very uh, important theorem that is parallel axis theorem okay parallel axis theorem or theorem of parallel axis what it says a very simple result this is a rigid body okay and this is the center of mass of the rigid body okay so we are finding A movement of inertia of this rigid body with respect to this line, with respect to a line which is passing through the center of mass, and then there is a another line with respect to which I want movement of inertia. So basically, this is the rigid body. I want movement of inertia of this rigid body with respect to a line which is passing through center of mass, and with respect to a line which is parallel to that original. So there is a uh, theorem for this, and that is if R is the distance between them, obviously these two are parallel lines, so I can find the distance between the two lines. R also let I C D and I A D be uh, they are let these are moment of inertia of rigid body about C D which is passing through center of mass and about A B respect. Okay, moment of inertia about C D, moment of inertia about it so according to this theorem we have a simple result as this okay where of course capital m is what mass mass of rigid okay so this is mab is equals to mcb plus mr square so this will be uh, this can be used in the next uh, article that we are going to discuss and there is a an, one another theorem also perpendicular axis theorem what is it says first of all this theorem is applicable only to the plane bodies now it's not in it's it will be applied only in two dimensional no it says that it will be applied on only plane bodies if my plane body is considered in three dimension okay so this is a plane body i have considered it in three dimension okay this is x axis this is y axis and this is z axis these points means all of these lines should pass through a common point that point cannot be uh, means uh, i cannot have like uh, an x which is an a line which is parallel to the x axis and not uh, not intersecting at the same point i need to have three mutually perpendicular lines intersecting at only one single point only then this theorem works so what does the, uh, what this theorem says is this theorem says Moment of inertia with respect to z is equal to moment of inertia with respect to x plus moment of inertia with respect to y. Again, a very important result. But do take care of the fact that I cannot apply this theorem if I have to deal with a three-dimensional object. I cannot apply this in sphere. Although sphere is a three-dimensional body, so I can have I can discuss about x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. But that's a three-dimensional body. I cannot apply it on three-dimensional body. I can apply it on only plane bodies considered in three dimension. Okay. so with this i can uh discuss the second part and that is this hmm. so we are on the same part where we were finding moment of inertia of rod but now change is line now line is passing through the mid now line is passing to the midpoint now about a line through its center perpendicular to its length so this is center this was of length this was of length 2a so now this is a obviously 
and now i'll take again a small element over here this is of length del x okay this is of length del x and with a distance x so starting again mass will be exactly same mass of elementary portion is is m by 2a this is mass per unit length into length of the elementary uh, portion this is mass so moment of inertia would be therefore moment of inertia is m and distance i have taken again same x square x square is the distance now we'll integrate but now only change is in the uh, limits of the integration now limits will be in this direction it will be from minus a to it is not from 0 to 2a now because line is in the middle so therefore moment of inertia of complete rod will be minus a to a m by 2a constant it will come outside x square dx okay so solve it this is m a square by 3 let us apply parallel excess theorem for doing this part why because in the first part in the first part we have calculated moment of inertia we have calculated moment of inertia of this rod with respect to line at one of its extremities so this is a b and let this line be c d. and one line is in the middle one line is in the middle this is c theek hai to isn't it uh, the picture looks like the picture that we have discussed in, in a parallel axis theorem isn't it the same to this is a line passing through the center of mass and this is a line parallel to that and the distance between them is a so moment of inertia about cd what was the parallel axis theorem see moment of inertia ha huh, moment of inertia about cd cd moment of inertia na chal pala plus mr square is equals to plus uh, m r square r square is the distance so distance is a square is equals to i of if i of ab we have already done in the first part we have that 4 by 3 4 by 3 ma square So let's substitute the value. So I of C D plus M A square is equal to four by three, four by three, ah uh, M A square. Yes. So I of C D will be four by three M A square minus M A square. That will be equal to one by three M A square. This is I. C. Okay, and this is exactly. So you can directly apply your theorem also. Parallel axis. Next, let us discuss for uh, moment of inertia of a rectangular lamina. Rectangular lamina means there is a rectangular sheet area. Area is also involved here. Of length two a and breadth two b about a line. Through its center and parallel to one of its edges. Okay, through its center and parallel to one of its edges. So what I can take is, um, let us consider this is this is rectangle, right? Of 
length to it. And breadth two. Length two, breadth two. We have. Acha, what are what is the line that we are seeing? Line is about a line through its center and parallel to one of its edges. So it can be parallel to breadth also. It can be parallel to length also. But it has to pass through the center of the rectangle. So let me consider. Uh, x axis means parallel to the parallel to the length so it is going to be this so we are calculating with respect to ox and oy right so Hmm. Now, we have to start with by taking a small uh, element here. First of all, mass of mass of rectangular lamina. And because rectangular lamina, uh, this is a two dimensional object, so degree of freedom is two, so that I have to uh, select an area. This, I will select an elementary area in, in this. So, area will be chosen in form of a strip. Let us take a small strip. Right. Let me call it as PQRS, where this length is, as you can see, 2B. Length of this uh, strip is 2B. But uh, uh, breadth is a very small breadth I'm taking, del X. Which is again at a distance of x from that y over x axis. Now, this is y, this is okay. Now, mass of this rectangular lamina, if I take it to be capital M, so mass of the rectangular lamina of of area 4ab of this area is capital A. So, it implies mass per unit per unit area would be capital M by 4ab. This is mass per unit area. So, what will be mass of this strip? So, mass of strip P Q R S is equals to M by 4 A B. Okay, mass and area is 2 B into del X. So this is mass of that strip. What is distance? Distance from where? X axis. But you look at this uh, concept, what is happening here? I can consider this as a rod because it has a very small uh, breadth. I can take it, this is a rod and there is a line about which we have to calculate moment of inertia and that line is passing through the center of the rod because that O point is the center. So, this is actually finding moment of inertia of a rod about a line which is passing through the midpoint of that rod and perpendicular to the length of them. This is just the part that we have done. This one. Moment of inertia of the rod about a line which is passing through the middle midpoint. That's why I said the results are also important because that can be used later. Also in the questions, you can use this result. So, m a square by 3. So, mass is, achha, what is a? m is the mass of the rod. Mass of the strip we have already calculated. What is A? A is the half of length of this rod. So, half of the length of that strip. Square by 3. So, what is the length of the strip? Length of the strip is 2B. Half will be B. B square by 3. Mass is here. Therefore, moment of inertia of strip 
P Q R S is equals to M by four A B two B del X and uh, B square by three. B square by three. So this is cancelled. So we are left with. Okay, let me take a common. Del x. Okay. So m b square divided by six a del x. This is moment of inertia. So uh, now you can find moment of inertia of the whole rectangular lamina about OX. This is moment of inertia of strip PQ about OX. Therefore, moment of inertia of rectangular lamina about OX is moment of inertia of rectangular lamina about OX is m b square upon 6a integration. Integration will be this is x. x can be again from minus a to a. So it is from minus a to a 1 x. Okay. So this is going to be just 2a. So we'll cancel and this is m b square by m b squared by 6a into 2a 3a cancel this is m b squared by 3 similarly this is with respect to ox similarly moment of inertia of rectangular lamina about oy rectangular lamina about oy is equals to m a square by b. So this, this is a plane body. We have calculated moment of inertia with respect to x. We have calculated moment of inertia with respect to y. Now I can calculate very easily moment of inertia with respect to z. A plane body considered in 3D. For that we'll apply perpendicular axis theorem which says iz is equal to ix plus iy and that is your second part which is this. Uh, now, now rectangular lamina now rectangular lamina uh, about see about a line through its center. Now, this is very important that uh, the intersection of all these mutually perpendicular lines should be a point, a single point. Only then I can apply this. So, it is also passing through the center and perpendicular to its plane. So, maybe something like that. This is perpendicular to x-axis as well as y-axis. This is perpendicular. So, we know with respect to x, we know with respect to y. So, iz is equal to ix plus iy. That is equal to m b square by 3 plus m a square by 3. This is m by 3 a square plus b square. Okay. Otherwise, you can, uh, if you do not want to apply perpendicular axis theorem, then you can uh, again consider an area of del x del y. Okay, this is a very small area. The distance from the z axis, the distance from the z axis is obviously. Uh, this is x, this is y. This is your area, this is del x, this is del y, this is y, this is x. So distance is obviously x square plus y square root. So you take the mass, capital M, distance is root of x square plus y square. So you get moment of inertia of that small uh, element and now if you want to 
calculate it for the whole rectangle then you have to do the double integration this time and double integration value of the uh, x will be from minus a to a and y from minus b to b so if you go by that method do not want to apply this by taking that element so it will be integration this is 2b this was 2a this is 2b so This will be integration from minus a to a, integration from minus b to b, mass, mass per unit area multiply by the area of that element and distance square means x square plus y square. Okay. Hmm. So this will be dx dy. You can solve this integration. You can you'll get exactly the same answer, m by three, and bracket a square plus b square. Okay. Next we have moment of inertia of a rectangular parallel pipe of edges two a, two b, and two c about a line. Now see this carefully. About a line which is parallel to the edge of length two a and passing through its center. This is your rectangular parallel line. Uh, now, line is let let us give the notations. This is going to be two a, two a, two b, and two c. Two a, two b, and two c. So uh, now I have to take a rectangular. Acha, let's draw a line also. Line is passing through the center. Line is parallel to one of its edges. मतलब edges of length two a and passing through the center. So from the center and parallel to this, let it be O X. Okay. Let it be O Z. Let this be. Let this be O. नेक्स्ट तो इन ऑर्डर टू टेक लेट अस ड्रॉ वाइड दिस साइड लेट अस कंसीडर A small rectangular sheet. So we have considered a rectangular sheet here. This is this uh, elementary portion of that rectangular parallel pipe that we have considered. Of obviously, this is. Del x and other than that length and breadth are two uh, b and two c of this rectangular sheet. So mass mass of this this uh, slide that we have considered mass of this slide will be mass per unit mass per unit 
वॉल्यूम बिकॉज दिस इज अ थ्री डायमेंशनल थिंग थ्री डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम इज एक्स वाई जेड थ्री तो मास पर यूनिट वॉल्यूम वॉल्यूम इज टू ए इंटू टू बी इंटू टू सी सो एट ए बी सी एंड and what is uh, volume of this slide this is uh, 2c and 2b and del x okay so 2 and b and c cancel m by 2a del x this is mass before finding distance because that's the that's the uh, formula m r square so after finding mass we are looking for the uh, distance but before finding that see if i directly know moment of inertia here i directly can find moment of inertia moment of inertia of this rectangular sheet about a line if i see the front view of this slide it will look like this and the line is passing to the center and we have just done this question we have just seen that about z axis m by 3 a square plus b square a and b uh, where 2a and 2b are the length and breadth of the rectangle so here b uh, 2b and 2c here 2c and 2b these are uh, length and breadth so uh, so i can directly find moment of inertia i do not need to find the distance so moment of inertia or this rectangular slide moment of inertia of this rectangular slide about ox is about ox is m by so mass is this m by 3 this is 6 m by 3 and uh, b square plus c square. this is your moment of inertia next moment of inertia of the complete parallelopipede so we have to integrate it implies moment of inertia of rectangular parallelopipede parallelopipede is is about ox about ox is m by 6a b square plus c square common integration of bx and x will be obviously from minus a to a so this is 2a m by 6a b square plus c square this is 2a a and a cancel Three. This is m by three b square plus c, and that is your result. Similarly, you can find moment of inertia about x x uh, about y axis also and about z axis. So about uh, this is this was about x axis. So similarly, moment of inertia about moment of inertia of a rectangular parallelopipede. parallel pipe is equal uh, to of rectangular parallel pipe about oy and oz respectively is z r m by 3 so in x a is missing in y b will not be there so a square plus c square and in z and m by 3 a square plus b square respect okay that is your answer next we have is more a uh, moment of inertia of a uniform triangular lamina about one side so we can choose any one side here let this be the 
let this be your triangle and in this triangle we have to find mo uh, moment of inertia about one side so let it be a b c we'll find it about bc we'll find moment of inertia of this uh, triangular lamina about bc so in this again i have to take a small portion so that elementary portion let me take it as this this is the elementary portion we have taken let it be pq of del x which is uh, let us assume at a distance of okay let me draw perpendicular first of all here let it be d and e so we are taking that pq element at a distance x from a and at a distance p this is p distance from uh, bc okay vortex this a e basically the length of the perpendicular is p so first of all mass uh, this will be obviously a and opposite to b we have b and opposite to c we have c chal to let that pq be a strip of breadth del x and length acha length uh, we do not know so we have to calculate it in terms of the either the sides abc okay hmm so we can start first of all let's start by finding uh, mass mass per unit length mass then we'll see then we'll see which variable can create problem here mass per unit area mass per unit area area is 1 by 2 Half into base into height. So AP. This is two m by AP. Right. So what is area of that strip? So mass of strip PQ is mass per unit area and multiplied by multiplied by area of this strip that is pq multiplied by del x ठीक है तो obviously this pq will create a problem here because i cannot have that pq uh, in the final answer and uh, distance is easy na distance of that pq from uh, your bc because uh, bc is the line about which we are calculating the moment of inertia it implies moment of inertia of strip pq about bc is mass mass distance square distance total is p this is x so it is p minus x whole square this is your moment of inertia let us deal with that pq because pq cannot be in the final expression so what we'll do is we'll use the uh, similarity criteria look at the triangle adq and and triangle aec these are similar triangle triangle adq is similar to triangle a ec aec by angle angle right so that means by uh, sides are proportional right so that so i can write so ad 
AD divided by AE is equals to DQ divided by divided by EC. Okay. So similarly, I can write it for this side AP, ADP and AEB. A, D, P and A, E, B. Again, by angle angle criteria, which implies A, D by A, E is equals to D, P by E, B. From 1 and 2, from 1 and 2, AD by AE is equals to DQ by EC is equals to DP by EB which is equals to PD plus DQ divided by BE plus EC. This is simply from If x by a is equals to c by d, x by, okay, that is equals to x plus c divided by a plus d. Simple uh, basic concept I have applied here. Okay, I have added these two fractions. So I can uh, equate first and last and I will get It implies AD by AE is equals to, what is this? PD plus DQ. PQ and this is BC. PQ divided by BC. Substitute all the values. AD. AD is X. AE is P. So, X by P is equals to PQ divided by, what is BC? A. A. You have value of PQ in terms of A. X and P. Okay. Use using this value in using this value of PQ in equation one. Okay. So here we'll have moment of inertia of the strip PQ. Therefore, we get moment of inertia of strip PQ about moment of inertia of the strip PQ about uh, BC is equals to about BC is equals to now look at this this is this is 2m by AP by AP then we had PQ PQ value of PQ we have calculated here so AX by P AX by P then we have del X P minus X whole square okay look at this P minus X square and then del X so this is moment of inertia of the strip now you can integrate to find the moment of inertia of the whole triangular lamina it implies moment of inertia of triangular lamina is lamina about bc is equals to is equals to hmm, 2m by p square outside 2m by p square outside integration will be from so x x is from this this strip can be from here from a point to that uh, base bc so x can be from 0 to maximum p so i'll have integration from 0 to p x 
b square plus x square minus 2 p x dx. This is 2m by p square. So, P square, this will be X square by 2. So, P square by 2 plus X cube. So, X raised to power 4 by 4 minus 2 P X square by 2. So, P square by 2. Okay. Cube 4 square. So, we'll have Okay, just a second. Square now. It will be cube by 3. Cube by 3. It is P cube by 3. Okay, okay sir. Ajay, so, P square cancel. 2 outside. So, you will have Here we have 2m by, I can take this side, this is 2m p square by 2 plus p square by 4 minus 2 p square by 3. So, hmm. this is, solve it. It will be mp square by 6. That is your expression. And that is it. So this was about moment of inertia. We did a uh, moment of inertia for some special cases. These are the very basic objects, the basic uh, rule. And see, uh, obviously these derivations are very important. Not from the point of view that these derivations can be can appear in the exam from the point of view of the derivations gives you idea about how to attempt the question so if you have if you uh, want to find moment of inertia of some non basic objects for example here the rectangle i know the area of the rectangle but i can have some uh, objects whose area or the volume is not obvious we have to find that first right those questions can appear in the exam and these derivations will give you the idea about that I hope this video was useful. In the next video, I'll discuss some of the questions in which I'll uh, discuss some non-basic objects, right? So, thank you so much.